Namaste. So now we're going to continue our analysis of Mahabhava by discussing the five bhavas that make up Mahabhava and how when they combine, they cause an extreme state of transcendental pleasure. So the five are Vibhava, Anubhava, Sattvika Bhava, Vyabhachari Bhava, and Sthai Bhava. These are the five types of bhavas, and we're going to discuss them now, at least uh, define them, so that we can discuss in detail later on. First, vibhava causes relishing of rati, bhava. Vibhava takes the form of alamban, support of two types, and Udipan, stimuli. First of all, definition of rati from the Sanskrit dictionary is pleasure, enjoyment, delight in, or fondness for, and uh, uses the locative case. For example, uh, rati bandha. Uh, to find pleasure in something, and specifically the pleasure of love, sexual passion, or union, amorous enjoyment, uh, often personified as one of the two wives of Kamadeva. And there are other definitions too. Now, regarding Vibhava, Vibhava is the cause of relishing transcendental emotion. The Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the nectarian ocean of devotion, defines it in the Southern Ocean, where it talks about the components of rasa. In rasa, the Bibhavas should be known as the cause of relishing rati. They take the form of support, alambana, of two types, and stimuli, udipana. So, in other words, transcendental emotion doesn't arise all by itself. It has a cause. That cause is known as vibhava, which comes before the actual experience of bhava. And these are divided into three types. Two types of support. And then there's the alambana, the stimulus. The support uh, is the medium or the being in which the bhava takes place. So in Alamban, there are two, the personality or the deity, which one is worshipping, and the devotee. And they're called the ashraya. The devotee is the ashraya or the home of the bhava. And the deity is the ashrita or the object of the uh, bhava, of the devotion. And finally, there's the udipana. Now, udipana can be of many types. I'll read some more. Alambanas are described as follows. The wise consider the alambanas to be God as the object of love experienced in rati and his devotees as the experiencers of rati the five major and seven secondary sthai bhavas. So things that nourish the bhava of the practitioner are called udipanas, or stimuli. These are things such as God's qualities, pastimes, decorations, smile, fragrance, uh, decorations, anklets, conch shell, footprints, his dhamma or her dhamma, the tulasi, and other offerings offered to uh, the lotus feet of the Lord, devotees, and festival days that commemorate the different pastimes of the Lord. Now, these are all stimuli for ecstatic love. 
See, this is why we practice sadhana. This is why we study scriptures. Uh, this is why we go to temples and perform puja and do all the things we do. Because they are udipana. They're stimuli for ecstatic love between the ashraya and the ashrita, the home of the love and the object of the love. And in bhakti, these three things go together to uh, create the form of the bhava. Now, what's next is anubhava. Anubhava expresses the bhava within the heart. They are predominantly external transformations. Once the bhava is caused by vibhava, it is expressed by anubhava. And anubhavas are of many types. When we do the episode concentrating on, on anubhava, I'm going to list them out. <laughs> there are dozens of them. But these are all symptoms of transcendental ecstasy. This is how we know that we are in spiritual consciousness. And this is how others can tell also that the spiritual consciousness is taking place within us. So the uh, expressions of the bhavas are very important. Let me read about it. The external transformations known as anubhavas are actions such as dancing, rolling on the ground, singing, shouting, stretching the body, bellowing, yawning, breathing heavily, disregarding others, drooling, laughing loudly, whirling around, and hiccups. Anubhavas are of two types. Shita, meaning cool, with a lack of bodily movement, and kshepana, meaning throwing about, involving distinct bodily movements. Shita includes singing, yawning, breathing heavily, disregarding others, drooling, and smiling. Kshepana includes dancing, rolling on the ground, shouting, stretching the body, bellowing, laughing loudly, whirling around, and hiccups. <laughs> so, if you've never been around ecstatic devotees, you probably can't imagine how these things happen, but they do. And they're all spontaneous. None of it is planned, although there are some rascal phonies who <laughs> act. Uh, I mean, anybody, if you, with a little practice, can learn to cry, for ex or actually to make water come out of their eyes. It's not really crying. Anybody can pretend to roll on the ground in ecstasy and so on like that. And it happens. But uh, the symptoms of real bhava are not interrupted by anything material. So if we see someone rolling on the ground and then later on they're down at the local bar, <laughs> unless they're preaching or teaching, we can understand that they're not for real. Uh, sometimes people use their own neurotic symptoms, uh, or they misuse them rather, to imitate bhava. And, uh, but this is extremely unsatisfying and unethical. So then sattvika bhavas is when the heart becomes overwhelmed by rati or bhava, in relation to the Ishta Devata, either directly or indirectly. Just like a cup that is full and begins to overflow, uh, this is the Satrika Bhava. When the love becomes too much, it can't be contained anymore. It manifests as these symptoms, these wonderful symptoms of bhakti the transformations that arise from this sattva, uh, the overwhelming feeling of love for Ishtadevata, are called sattvika bhavas, 
There are three types. Snigdha, affectionate, arising from genuine rati. Digdha, tainted, arising from other emotions. And Ruksha, contaminated, arising in a person without rati. So that's what we're talking about. Uh, we're not interested in the false display of so-called spiritual emotions. We want the real thing, snigdha, from affection. It has to come from love, or it's meaningless. Just like we see many times in South India, uh, people doing these elaborate ritual performances, and they're anxious, they're uh, angry, because they have to force themselves to follow all these procedures. And uh, they're also very exclusive. They don't want to allow Westerners, for example. <laughs> but uh, this is not love. This is not, they're not doing it out of affection. If you love God, you will love all God's creatures as well. And you will do your seva with love not with anxiety, not out of force or pressure, uh, not with anger and frustration at having to follow so many rules and stuff. Um, this should be clear to everyone. Then there's Vyabhachari Bhava. Bhavas that move against the Stai Bhava while assisting it in a distinctive way called Visheshana Abhimukhyena, that on the, on the face of it, they appear to be opposite of the Sthai Bhava, or the permanent loving relationship with the Ishtadevata. But actually, they simply add spice to it. For example, uh, there are 33 Vyabhichari Bhavas, uh, and... Uh, they reveal themselves by words, by eyebrows and other bodily parts, and by external actions, anubhavas, that arise from overwhelming emotions. We already went over that. Uh, since they are set in motion, motion, shancharayanti, in the course of the sthai bhava, they are called sanchari bhavas. All the vyabhichari bhavas rise and fall like waves in the ocean. And they uh, sweeten or uh, sharpen the feeling of this Thai bhava and eventually merge into it. Now, they're like eddies or little vortexes arising in a stream in the flow of water when it goes around a rock or something like that. It simply makes the, uh, the feeling more piquant, more poignant. And finally, there's the Sthai Bhava. Well, we've talked about Sthai Bhava so much. That Bhava which, controlling other favorable Bhavas, such as Hasya, laughter, and contradictory Bhavas, such as Krodha, anger, presides in the heart like an efficient ruler. This is called Sthai Bhava. Sthai means steady, comes from a word that means to stand. So when there's one feeling that stands in the heart like a king, like a ruler, and controls all the other spiritual emotions, this is called the Sthai Bhava. This is our permanent loving relationship. And it comes in five flavors, neutrality, servitorship, friendship, parenthood, and conjugal love. These are the principal flavors of love of Godhead. And in the course of this series, we're going to discuss each of these types of bhavas in more detail, and each of the five major sthai bhavas uh, in more detail, giving lots of examples to help you understand. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti Aung.